This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show. On the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. What's happening? It is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We're coming to you from the 7 Mile Casino Studios. 7milecasino.com. Shout out to my man. Tommy, Tommy. Now I know everybody who's getting into our YouTube chat, everybody in, in YouTube land, everybody knows Tommy, Tommy. Um, last week when I saw Tommy, Tommy, before I went down to West Liberty University for my son's homecoming, he gave me a West Liberty football shirt that he had custom made for me. And he said, what can I do for the show? And I said, you know what you could do? Don't play poker in other casinos. Go play poker at Seven Mile Casino. I received probably 10 emails from Tommy Tommy thereafter where he was showing me here I am playing poker. Here I am tipping the, uh, you know, the, 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 the guy in the casino. Here I am over at Sammy's restaurant and bar. I'm having a good pizza. I mean, Tommy Tommy understands that when you support the show, you support the sponsors. And if you're going to play blackjack or poker, why not go to Seven Mile Casino? It's seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. Great restaurant and bar with Sammy's restaurant and bar right there. Smoke-free environment, beautiful Bay of Chula Vista, great location. I've been to every casino in San Diego County over the course of my 20-plus years. Seven Mile Casino is my favorite place to play because, A, I think I win there, and B, uh, there's no smoke. <laughs> yeah, I always feel like I walk out a winner, you know? Maybe they set it up for me. They're like, yeah, we're going to hook you up. I don't know, man, but uh, I love it there. I really do, and I love Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. Alex, you have any suggestions as to what people should order when they go, given that you were – a one-time Sammy server back before you became a big superstar on radio and TV. Yeah. Back in the day. Um, let's see, what am I in the mood for? Like, obviously you got to start with duck tacos. You don't get the chicken wings. That's for Browner. You want to go right. there. You want to get duck tacos. You want to get yourself a balsamic grilled chicken salad. You want to get yourself an arugula and pear pizza. You want to top it off with a little messy Sunday. That's my recommendation. Yeah. But I mean, the sliders though are fire. By the way, the wings are good. I was just giving Browner. Hard no, the wings are great. You know what? I love Browner. I have become more of a fan of the dry rub wing rather than the wet saucy wing, you know? Well, uh, listen, I don't know nobody who like a dry rub. No, no, no. I like that lemon pepper dog. Well, lemon Browner, pepper you had good. Browner, you had a dry rub on Saturday. I was sitting right next to you. No, brother, I don't. I don't. Uh, dry rubs are bad for you. No. What do you mean you dry had, rubs are bad you had, for you? You had dry rub chicken wings on Saturday. They're good. I'll tell you right now, they're good at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Have fun. Good luck. You're a winner at Seven Mile Casino. And any issues related to gambling, you call 1 800 Gambler. All right, fellas. Um, oh, y'all yeah. talking about food. My bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not, yeah. Food, dog. Not dry rub. It's a kid show. Oh. No. Come on. My bad. For reals. Um, I will say this. We got a lot we're going to get to today. We're going to talk some NBA, believe it or not. We're going to talk a lot of NFL because we got to get ourselves back on track to the NFL. I have, I have no idea what's going on in college football right now because we've been so baseball centric. So going to get ourselves back on track. But, but can, we, like, can we still start in the, the aftermath of the Padres? What do you guys think? Sure. That, honestly, for whatever reason – that's really still top of mind. Yeah. I, yeah, I wish it was the uh, like official off season already. I wish yeah. we could make a trade. I wish we could sign a player. I wish we could <laughs> play baseball next week. Yeah. Hey, where are the winter meetings this year? Like remember San when Diego. the winter meetings were in San Diego? Right. And they were like, Hey, you guys want to go down to the winter meetings? And back then I was like, no, I mean, I still so don't. I to... Right. I still don't want to do I it. I still don't, but I... now I'm going to pay attention. Can you imagine you trying to stop one of these guys to talk and not being able to pick them out of a lineup? No, no, but dude, I would say this. The winter meetings are back here in San Diego, and I could, in theory, find myself, depending on when it is and, like, what time of the day, but, like, I could find myself in the hotel lobby going, you know what, I'm going to stick around here and poke around a little bit. Now, I say that today, and then the winter meetings come, and they're like, yo, you guys going down to the winter meetings? I'm like, no. no oh, I forgot. The but it sounds person, good. The only person you need to talk to at the winter meetings is Scott Boris. That's yeah, it. he's the guy. Because he's the only one who will even tell you something, too. I mean, well, you he could say that about every offseason. True. Like, yeah. He's got somebody. Wow. Well, you know, we were having this conversation yesterday about Tatis versus Otani and would you make a trade? And the only reason I, I reset that conversation is for this reason. Browner said it, and I think he's right, and I think we all agree, that 
we all really ultimately want to see what the Padres will eventually look like when they have Soto, Machado, and Tatis in the lineup. You know, just the same way the Dodgers would have a Mookie Betts, a Freddie Freeman, and a Trey Turner, and they've got what you, I'm just calling it their big three, right? The Padres had a big two and a half. You know, they, they had Machado, they had Soto, they had Cronenworth. I'll call them a big two and a half, but a comparable big three of Soto, Machado, and Tatis. I think we all want to see that. Even though we were kind of having the theoretical conversation about how Otani could fulfill two roles for you, you know, um, I still think we all want to see what the big three will ultimately look like. And I think Peter Seidler tends to agree. Alex, why don't you uh, show everybody, and then we can read it for the radio listeners, what Peter Seidler you know, said about the future and about, in particular, at least the way I read it, kind of his thought also on a big three. Uh, this is a, a couple of quotes that I put together from the UT today. It's a quote. I kind of like spending quote. money. You can't take it's it with Peter you. Seidler. This yeah. is Peter Seidler. I kind of like spending money. You can't take it with you. We're good, and we have to protect that and enhance it. Every year is a completely different team, but what I like is we've got stability. We've got the top three guys at the top of the rotation. Our bullpen became good. Assuming we're rolling out, and I know we will, Tatis, Machado, Soto, and let's not forget Crony, as well as a bunch of others, we have a great core to build from. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, Browner, to your point, we got to see what this looks like. Yes, you have before, to. Before any decision is made about anything, you know, before the decision is made with regards to signing Soto to a very long and lucrative contract, before a decision is made about Tatis's future based on whether or not he's ready to grow up and be a professional and come back and be what he was, before you do anything, you got to take a look at what those three guys can be together. Because the Padres were this close to getting to the World Series and I would just say that if Tatis were Tatis and he were in this lineup, how much different might the Padres been have been offensively against Philadelphia? I think the offense, I think the offense would have had far more opportunities, depending on where you put him in the lineup. Because if they if they bat him first, if he's batting first in that lineup, one, two, three, you, you're not getting that's not you're not getting those one, two, three outs consistently you're not doing it and so I think it would have given the offense a level of boost that they needed to start games and when you get into these lulls and you get into these bullpens you would have seen more more success later in the game than you did but you know I, I really don't like talking about people who weren't there <laughs> what are you a coach we got to go with the guys we got yeah. I understand but but now we now we're not talking about past tense now we're I talking think, about future tense. I think now that we're sitting here on Thursday it's an appropriate we'll also won't be available for the first 11 games 20. Uh, I think, I think it's, it's appropriate games, yeah. now four days removed from what happened on Sunday. You can look back and have this conversation and start blaming Tatis for what could have been. I'm very comfortable doing that now. <laughs> like, I, I didn't want to do it while they were playing. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even want to talk about him. I don't want to talk about him all season. Me neither. I was pissed. Me but neither. now I could be a little bit more pissed and be like, bro, if you were there, they would have won. We could have had a Schwarber, Hoskins, Real Muto, Harper top four. You know, like if you go with 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 what we had there for a while, if you go, if you go to T Soto, Machado, Jury, Cronenworth, let's go. You know, Josh what I'm saying? Bell, Josh Bell, or whoever in that jury slot, you know, right? Like, let's go. But you know, they went with Kim, they went with Profar, and they are what they are. You know, they have a their ceiling is a lot lower than Tatis' ceiling, a lot lower. So, also, yeah, Scott, to your point though, like. When you start thinking about what could have been, but now really what could be, could have been angry, could be exciting. If yeah. they if they well unlock said. his ability to steal bases, hitting lead off with that power and that speed, oh my god! Ah, it's like starting to go on second. It's, it's also like starting like, extra innings every game. But I also want to, and I don't know how you guys feel. I genuinely am still like, you got to show me. I am not sitting here on Thursday, October 27th. And like, he's going to be here for 145 games next year. Like, I just don't feel that or 142 games this year. I don't feel that way yet. 
Like, I don't have the confidence in him to A, stay healthy, B, be as mature as they want him to be, and need him to be, need him to be. And those are the really my tip, my top two, my only concerns with him is like, I don't know what I'm going to get. Like, Peter Seiler can tell me that everything he wants. I know he was on the flagship today this morning saying, like, he's so remorseful, Tatis is so remorseful, and he feels like he owes it to the city to show him who he really is. And blah. like, he said, all, Seidler's saying these things. Right, of course. I want to, I need to see it. Like, that's yeah, what Tatis has done for me. Like, I need to see it for me my, to start, like, problem is, pen, penciling him in every day. He got busted for steroids, so I don't know how long he was on it. I don't know how that played into his ability. So I, I have to see it, too. I have to see it, too. And if it comes back the same, then, you know, let's have a parade. But if it's if he struggles, which he probably should because he hadn't played baseball in a whole year up, up into that pre, up into, uh, uh, spring training, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't well, know. It's, it's going to be hard. I'll tell you this. Um, somebody had sent me a message yesterday, a uh, longtime listener and a longtime Padres fan. First-time caller? He, no, he wasn't a first-time caller. He was a longtime uh, DMer. And he said to me, he goes, you know, dude, he goes, as I think to next year, and I think about having these three guys, and and I say three guys, I mean, Cronenworth's great, but I'm, I'm going to move him off to the side here for a second. Cronenworth, to me, is a great player, a little underrated in some ways, and, and a, I always think of him as kind of like a heart and soul kind of guy. But I put Soto, Machado, and Tatis together because those three guys, there's a lot of commonality between them you know and it's i just think that somebody had sent me a message yesterday and said soto should be the leadoff guy no because he's because he's really good at getting on base and his power doesn't translate in petco right and, and so so exactly uh, no but for real like i think it's actually i know we're kind of getting way ahead of ourselves here but i do think that's not a bad idea you know soto likes to draw a lot of walks he finds his way onto base he is he is not the home run power hitter that we all expected him to be, and maybe he will be, but he wasn't. And Tatis is a much more powerful home run hitter than than Soto. So I, I don't I don't know if you go Soto Tatis Machado or if you go Soto Machado Tatis. Not really sure. Uh, that's a Bob Melvin thing, but um, I do think it's it's worthy of consideration that maybe Soto becomes your leadoff hitter I, when those three guys are in the lineup together. You need that speed at the leadoff position of Tatis. You you need that speed, the threat of the steal to to occupy the mind of the pitcher while Soto's taking walks. So um, I, I, I did, that speed. I think that speed that he has could be invaluable at the top of the lineup. I think also for the first time in maybe ever. I know. Maybe I ever. Know. I know. <laughs> what? I I well I think I know. I think the Dodgers are in flux for the first time in a oh. really long time. I no, think no, when you look, else. I think when you look at their team this year, mm -hmm. their pitching carried them a lot of the way, and they still will have that pitching. But Kershaw maybe won't be back, but they don't have a closer. They don't have any established roles in the bullpen, so that is a flux. That's them. They, they will. They will figure it out. They have money to figure it out. But but the, Walker Bueller won't be back. Right. Dustin, Dustin May, May. You don't know. Is a question mark. Gonsolin is a question mark. Right, because so, Gonsolin had an amazing first half and then got hurt, and and we all saw what happened when he pitched against. Like the I got to look at their their contracts for pitchers, but I know as far as where I'm getting to, their position players, you have Mookie and you have Freeman. You don't right. have Trey, Trey Turner. You don't have Trey to Turner leave. signed. Right. right, Justin Turner wasn't even playing third base in the playoffs. No, nope. and he nope. he has a team option that they're not going to pick that up for sixty right. million dollars. Max mm -hmm. Muncy, okay, put him at third. I don't care. Cody Bellinger, mm -hmm. are they going to let him walk for free? Probably. Like um, maybe. Or I, maybe I arbitra arbitration deal, but he's right. still not even playing. No, no, but uh, the, but an arb an arbitration deal for Cody Bellinger based on his hitting numbers will probably be very beneficial to the Dodgers. Yeah. So if he wants to stay, and the Dodgers want him to stay because he's a really good defensive player, um, they could probably get him. I'm going to say relatively cheap compared to yeah. the market. They don't have a left fielder, unless they put Chris Taylor there, I guess, who just signed a four year deal. But I mean, the, Trace Thompson. You know what I'm saying? Like. So when you look at the Dodgers right now, for sure, for sure, they have Mookie, they have Freeman, they have Will Smith, and they have Chris Taylor. Like, for sure, and Muncie. Those are the guys that they have. And I would say for the first time, like, depending on what the Padres do this offseason and with the addition of Tatis, the Padres could make a run. Obviously, you can't discount the Dodgers and their infinite amount of money they spend and the guys they have coming up. 
you know, Gavin Lux seems to be turning into a really good player. But I would say for the first time, you actually could compete with them for the division. Um, hold on. One other caveat to all of this. Um, what if the Giants, what if the Giants sign Aaron Judge? I, I mm. still kind of think mm. Judge goes back to the Yankees, but I certainly mm. think that everything you just said about the Dodgers, Alex, mm -hmm. I'll bet you that the Dodgers at least go in to try on Judge. Um, because if, if what, the DH Dodgers, him? well, that or or maybe move him to right field and put Mookie at second base, which is something that's been discussed. All I'm saying is this, is that. So would the you, Dodgers, like, thing is that they're not going to get Turner and Judge. If, no, I, no, if I, I had the, to pick one, which one are you picking? Me, well, the expectation personally? is that Trey, Trey, Trey Turner's leaving. That's that's the expectation. But if it's me now. personally, I think yeah. you take Trey all day. Trey, Trey all is day. a top two, top three shortstop in the league. And to lose him for nothing, that's going to hurt them. Power, that that power. I, uh, give me that Aaron Judge power, man. Give me that. It doesn't Dodger, translate. Dodger, it doesn't, he don't have no short porch. He don't have no little minor league field like the Yankee Stadium is, dude. That's you want to talk about too. translating? All right. Well, but dude, how do you do in the playoffs? The Struck out. He hit like but under two hundred. If you're the Dodgers and you think that the that the Giants are for real about spending whatever it would take to get Aaron Judge, the Dodgers might go in on that as well. You're also All talking about is, the Giants, who Brandon Crawford is thirty six, uh, Evan Longoria is thirty seven, thirty eight years old, uh, Brandon Belt. You know, like they have guys there that are old. I mean. I think Jock signed a one-year deal. So you got a, a team that, like the Giants, they, they, I think they finished below 500. Like they just had yeah. an excellent year. The judge deal is going to be a 10-year deal, though. Well, but let's see where he goes. I, I guess my point is, is this, though. I mean, Alex, you're, you're saying that for the first time ever, as we sit here today in today, late October, right now. And, the, right, and the Padres season <laughs> no just money ended spent. this right. past weekend, right? That, that we're talking about could the Padres eventually – take over the Dodgers roster wise. Number one, mm -hmm. my point was going to be this. Oh my God. It's October 27th. <laughs> the Padres season ended four days ago. And rather than us already like being off onto football and baseball's in the rear view, and I could care less about the world series and the team ended the season in June or July, even though they were still playing, we're talking about the Padres and the future because Alex, as you said, the Tati stuff, the past tense, angry, the future tense, excited. Let me ask both of y'all the question real quick because I know we got to go. If you're a free agent and you're looking at the Dodgers and you're looking at the Padres, it's currently constituted, and, they, and your position is open. Which team are you signing with? Let's say the money is the same. Because who's trending up more? Ask that question again. If you are a free agent mm -hmm. and you're choosing between it and you have a choice between the Dodgers and the Padres saying the money is the same, which team are you choosing? Um, so look you're, you're, look you're look trying to, you who to am I, who, but who well, am I? Like, you know, he's trying to lead us. He's trying to lead us into the obvious choice for any free agent is to choose the Padres over the Dodgers. And I just don't, I don't know that I agree. I don't think okay. that's the case. Okay. I mean, listen, it was a super exciting season and the crowd mm -hmm. went nuts and the fan base went crazy and the ownership mm -hmm. is willing to spend. And yes, the Padres definitely seem to be trending up and the Dodgers, you could argue, are obviously trending down. But if I'm an available free agent and the money's the same and I have the choice between San Diego and L.A., I think that maybe the opportunities for me off the field might be greater with the Dodgers than they are with the Padres. And I would say that, Brown, your question, this is the first year that you could even have that conversation. Oh, facts. That's why I'm asking it right. now. Because Machado came here because they over, not overpaid, but they paid. They him had to anybody. overpay him. Right. Well, Hosmer nobody came was here. Paying him that. Hosmer came here because yeah. nobody was paying him that. You know. Right. So, the, now going forward, if you're a free agent, yeah, you look at the Padres like exciting, San Diego. You know. So yeah, it's a conversation now. Whereas past, it was like if the money's the same, why am I going to San Diego instead of L.A.? But now, if the I money's exactly the same, it's a real conversation. One thing that we're going to be looking out for, and I, is it this upcoming year or is it the following year where Manny Machado After gets to – yeah, I mean, that that's a big consideration, mm -hmm. you know? That is a really big consideration. Mm -hmm. So, all right, listen, um, let me have one minute to just mention to everybody, our friends at Mazda of Escondido, mazdaofescondido.com. I've told the story 
I have a listener, a longtime listener who sent me a message and he said, hey, um, I want to thank you for sending me to Mazda of Escondido and Alan, the general manager. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, my wife went to buy a Mazda product at a, at a Mazda dealership in Carlsbad. I don't know the name of the dealership. I'm not trying to knock on these guys. He said before she went to buy the car, he suggested her, please go to Mazda of Escondido. I'm a Kaplan and crew listener. See this guy, Alan, he's the general manager. And I think we can get a good deal. At least let's just give him a, sh a chance, right? He winds up telling me that his wife bought the new Mazda product from Mazda of Escondido and saved $3,000 by buying at Mazda of Escondido versus the dealership she was going to buy from in Carlsbad. So I said to the guy, I go, hey, thank you very much for supporting our sponsors. And he said, no, thank you because you just saved me three grand. So look, you want to save money on a brand new Mazda product, 2022s, 2023s in ready for immediate delivery to drive off this afternoon. Mazda of Escondido and the Escondido Auto Park, MazdaVEscondido.com. All right, guys, um, as we catch up in the world of sports, because we've been so baseball focused, definitely want to talk about the Lakers and their 0-4 start. Definitely want to start talking about the NFL because there's a Thursday night football game tonight between Tampa and Baltimore. We'll get to all of this coming up. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios here on Kaplan and Crew. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal sports talk. You're watching Kaplan and crew tonight powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio in your view featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Dominating the SoCal radio airwaves for over 20 years. Join Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner for Kaplan and Crew. Every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk and the Mightier1090.com. Absolutely. The, the best part of the day is working with the team and working directly with customers. Just because it's fun and I enjoy collaborating. I enjoy watching the customers' reactions when the designers come up with their spaces. And we, we really take pride in the team effort and what we accomplish in the end. I can tell that uh, the team we have, uh, accountability is very important. They feel like the work that we do is, is not just a reflection of themselves, but a reflection of us. We've always been a design build company, but now we've taken design, not only our architectural, but interior design to a completely different level. The philosophy of Integrity here at Murray Lampert is always doing the right thing even when someone isn't looking. In turn, the homeowners get a really great product. We're truly a team at Murray Lampert Design, Build, Remodel, and we don't take that lightly. I thought I was okay. I had a degree, I had work experience. I should be able to provide for my kids, but they're just things that you don't plan on in life. My husband got laid off and we are a family of five. My mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I would ask the doctors, what can I do? And they would just say, just make sure she's eating. Our lives just changed completely. Thank God that we always had a, a plate of food. When your air conditioner needs to be tuned up, repaired or replaced, call Bill Howe. The name you have trusted for over 40 years. We carry the most reliable, energy-efficient brands that will fit your budget. Whether you are looking for a traditional or ductless air conditioning system, you know who to call. Call 1-800-BILL-HOW. Because we know how. Do the ups and downs of the financial markets have you on a roller coaster? Don't let the market take you and your investments for a ride. Stabilize your funds with SDCCU's Great Rate Savings, Money Market, or Certificate Accounts. Choose a savings option that meets your needs and watch your money grow with SDCCU. Earn 1.5% APY on a 12-month certificate or 2.5% APY on a 36-month certificate. Open an account at SDCCU.com slash now. SDCCU, it's not big bank banking, it's better. 
Change the way you look and feel with San Diego's most comprehensive varicose and spider vein treatment facility. San Diego Varicose Vein Treatment Center offers minimally invasive, pain-free procedures performed by board-certified cardiologist Dr. Tahizade. With over 17 years of experience, we specialize in the diagnosis of varicose veins, spider veins on the face, hands, and legs, ankle discoloration, leg swelling, and more. Improve your vein health today. Visit consultation.sdveintreatment.com or call 619-582-2404. Welcome back. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. Way to start a segment. DeMarco <laughs> Farr is here. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man and DeMarco with a big sneeze. DeMarco, oh, I that love was me. a big sneeze. Oh, that was you. That was me. Yeah, my bad. Oh, I thought that was DeMarco. I love a big sneeze. It just makes it like just clears me out, man. I love it. You know? The worst is when you lose one. Like mm. Sneeze and you know it's going to yeah. be a big and it just goes away. I hate that. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. I will say this. Um, now that I'm back into hoodie season, you know, from the summer of heat, sometimes I will sneeze and I'll like, put my, my, my hand, my nose into my like elbow, you know, cause I want to be polite. I don't want to sneeze outwardly to everybody, but then all of a sudden I got just stuff everywhere all over my hoodie, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Blame it on the baby. What baby? Exactly. You know, somebody says, why do you have like snot on your elbow? Say, oh, I have a kid, you know, <laughs> why? <laughs> Come on. Oh, I love you it. Use that's, what you got. <laughs> yeah. That's a great idea. Uh, so DeMarco Farr is here, the Super Bowl champion Ram defensive lineman, who's now a sideline analyst and part of the Rams radio broadcast. And uh, DeMarco, you're coming in in the middle of a conversation we were having about how Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers are both now, you know, on struggling teams and seem very disconnected. I'm just curious, what do you think about the old guy quarterbacks and and what's happened to these two guys so far this year? You know what? Kurt Warner is a friend of mine, former teammate, and I, I, I 100% agree when he said they look exhausted, especially Tom Brady. I feel bad for him, you know, knowing what's going on outside of football. And then you have to look, the NFL regular season is tough enough. And now you have to deal with a disgruntled wife that may be your ex-wife sooner than later. Uh, that, that, that's tough to get through. So, yeah, feel bad for him. Not so much for Aaron Rodgers, though. Um, I like him <laughs> as a quarterback. I love his talent. But um he he's kind of worn thin on me, you know what I mean, in his comments. But it's not to say that he's not right. Um, th there's some mistakes being made in, in Green Bay that should be corrected and, and that are easily correctable. So I don't think he was throwing his teammates under the bus, per se. I think he was actually talking about his coaching staff, which is not out of the, you know, out of his ballywick. That's usually what he does. But, yeah, I mean, both guys are still deadly enough to, to beat you. And I still think when – we get to close to Christmas time. Both of these teams will be in the mix, but right now they're trying to find their way. Who do you think DeMarco is the best team right now in the NFC? And the mm. reason I ask it that way is because I look at Buffalo and I look at Kansas city and I think these teams are far and away the best teams. And I just don't even know that the NFC has currently a, a threat to, to the best teams in the AFC. What do you think? So the NFC, you got to go with Philly. How can you not? Philly is doing a great job protecting the football. Jalen Hurts is better than I thought he was going to be. And they just got better when they acquired Robert Quinn from, from Chicago. So uh, the guy is a tremendous edge rusher. So I would say Philly right now is out in front. Do you believe in Minnesota? Yes. In a team with, with Kirk Cousins as your quarterback, as being one of the best in the NFC? Look, he's a good driver with a great car. So – as long as they continue to go and do what they have been doing, we'll, might be in there towards the end. And we just talked about Green Bay. So they can come out of that division and, uh, you know, be a, 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 what do you call it, a high seed in the playoffs. But right now, I'd say in the NFC, it has to be Philadelphia. Alex, do you really believe in your Vikings? Well, listen, man, they got a little charger in them. What I mean by that is they pretty much have beat the bottom of the barrel of the NFL. Uh, the only loss they have is to Philadelphia, where they looked absolutely awful. Um, and they did beat Miami, but that was without Tua. So I think they're kind of like my fantasy football team. I'm 5-1 and one too, but just because I'm playing the worst team so far. <laughs> um, but I, I think that they – it's I you know, we keep talking – we talked about the Lakers a lot today, like figuring it out early. I still think Kirk Cousins and Kevin O'Connell are figuring it out, but they are very, very talented on the offensive end. That gives me hope. 
Their defense is brutal, though. It's very brutal. Well, DeMarco, I don't, uh, I don't know if I'm buying Minnesota right now. I'm with you. Philadelphia has got to be the top team, obviously. But I look at Green Bay and I look at Tampa Bay and I look at the Rams as an example or the 49ers who just got smoked last week by Kansas City. And I'm just trying to figure out who in the NFC is good. What do you make of where the Rams find themselves going into this game against the Niners this weekend? Funny, no one said Giants yet. Anybody say Giants? Nope. Nope. No. <laughs> Saquon Barkley is killing them. Why don't we give the, the Giants any love? I think Probably. The, the, I don't like the Giants because I feel like their coach is getting the most out of that talent. And when people get a good chunk of film on what Debo is doing, they'll be able to minimize what Saquon Barkley is doing, and they will be able to really take Daniel Jones off the board. But I love their head coach. Love him. He's all the juice out of that lemon, huh? It's done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's all you can get. Well, look, uh, if Saquon Barkley continues to run like that, I mean, the Giants are going to be in the thick. But, Cap, to your point, um, look, the Rams have had a bye week. Uh, the, the one thing we were saying – during the game in Carolina was just get the W, go into the bye week feeling good about yourself, and then get ready to play the 49ers at home. So you got all that, and you're coming, and the San Francisco's coming in a little banged up. So this is your opportunity, not only to beat San Francisco, but to look good doing it. But we have said that for about the last five seasons. You've had opportunities to absolutely bury the 49ers, but on game day, the 49ers turn it around on you and look like Superman. So uh, I would say – I would go as far as to say this, Cap. This is a must-win for the Rams. You have to go out and beat San Francisco, and yeah. you have to beat them handily. You yeah. really do. If you want to keep your playoff hopes alive and keep the dream alive of defending this championship, getting back in the postseason. But number one, you got to beat them for the psychological edge. You do. You have to get this monkey off your back big time. Yeah. And there's only one way to do it. You're going to have to out-hit them. Out-hit them, out-physical them, beat them at their own game. So. It is it, ultra important that the Rams come out on top and do it in style versus San Fran. Yeah, we're talking to DeMarco Farr. He's part of the Rams radio broadcast team and a former, obviously, Rams defensive lineman that won the Super Bowl. Um, DeMarco, I, I just I don't know how the Rams do what you're saying they should they need to do, given the offensive line situation, the lack of a running game, the lack of pass protection. Um, the lack of playmakers in the passing game outside of Cooper Cup. I mean, wh how how do you propose they do this? Well, Alaric Jackson, uh, who kind of subbed in, and he subbed in at right guard. Now he's your starting left tackle. I like the guy. He's an old-school left tackle. He's big. He's vicious. He's mean. I think he's at home at that left tackle spot. So you may have a diamond in the rough there. But I think the biggest difference this week is you're going to have your starting center back. Brian Allen's coming back from injury. So this is no longer a third-string center uh, that's just trying to hang in there. This is a guy that was an alternate on the Pro Bowl team. He's very vocal. He's very loud. He's very nasty. Uh, he could be the tip of the spear for your offense. So your offensive line is going to get better simply because he's back in. And you're also going to get Van Jefferson back. That's what your offense has missed. Uh, he is explosive. Now, I made a mistake years ago when Deshaun Jackson was here of saying that Deshaun Jackson was your fastest guy, top-end speed-wise, right? Here's a guy that scores from long distance, and he's one of the best at it. But I was corrected on the field by one of the Rams coaches. He's not the fastest guy we have. It's actually Van Jefferson, and I didn't know that. So having him back in the lineup will help out Matthew Stafford. It will help out Cooper Cup. It will help out Sean McVay calling plays. You have a guy that can take the top off the defense, and he's savvy enough to do that Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, intricate stuff that gets the offense going in the run game. So having those two guys in the, back in the offense – your center, like I said, will help Matthew Stafford stay upright. It will help Sean McVay in his play calling. It will help the offense find the end zone a little bit more than they have the first six weeks. So the the 49ers already really made the Rams look bad a few weeks ago, and they didn't have Christian McCaffrey. Now they do. And Christian McCaffrey got over 100 uh, total yards against them when he was with a Panther. Uh, what do you think mm -hmm. the Niners are going to look like now that they have a now that McCaffrey has a full week of uh, learning that playbook? You know, look, um, when McCaffrey went to San Fran, I, I did like what Sean McVay said, like, there's another good player. And I thought he was great against the Rams when he was in Carolina just a couple of weeks ago. And he's a problem. Uh, eventually, he's going to be a big problem for the Rams. Now, this week, the 49ers are coming in banged up. I heard that Juszczyk has a broken finger, may have had surgery, so he may, may not play. So that's going to help. But what they can do with him is match up you to death. 
They can have Juszczyk, Debo, and uh, Christian McCaffrey on the field at the same time. First of all, what personnel group are you in? It depends on where they line up. Then what can they do out of the backfield uh, with Garoppolo? They're all great pass catchers. Plus, McCaffrey can run the ball between the tackles. So he just makes them even more dynamic. But like you said, if you can find a way to turn those first and 10, second and 10s into third and sevens, you can get after Garoppolo and win this football game. But if they start chipping away at you, and next thing you know, it's second and two, third and one, you, you have absolutely no chance to stop them because he has a full complement of the playbook to play your defense. But if the Rams defense can step forward, stop the run, First and 10 and force Garoppolo to beat you with his arm, there's a better chance of you beating them this weekend. Talking to DeMarco Farr this afternoon, for those of you that are listening on radio on 1090, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, um, you see DeMarco, he's got that Rams hoodie on, and, uh, and he'll be down there on the sidelines for the Rams and the 49ers this upcoming weekend at SoFi Stadium. Uh, I'm curious, DeMarco, do you, do you think that Seattle is for real in the NFC West? I do. Um, and I think we all made this mistake. Um, we blame the player, not the franchise. And you have to remember that Geno Smith was drafted to the Jets. And the Jets were still trying to figure it out. So they really didn't kind of build the offense, build the team to his his skill set. But in Seattle, I remember last year when the Rams knocked out Russell Wilson and Geno Smith entered the game. And the game should have been over. I think it was a two-score lead for the Rams and you're just bleeding clock trying to get out of there. Geno Smith was still trying to win the football game. Even when it was no longer in doubt, the game was over. The Rams had it. Geno Smith was still trying to make plays to win this football game. It went from more of auditioning for his next team to, hey, look, this is what this offense needs. I'm better than the other guy. So I saw that last year. So now that he's got a shot and here they are with a chance to be players in the NFC West, not surprised at all. So yeah, I mean, if you can get through San Francisco, you'll be done with the series with them. But then you still have those two games with Seattle. And then it'll be more of the same in the Pete Carroll era. Uh, to get to where you want to go, you're going to have to go to and through Seattle uh, to get to the playoffs. So uh, the more things change, the more they say the same. But Geno Smith is the real deal up there. Are you shocked by what, what appears to be dysfunction between the quarterback and the head coach uh, for the Arizona Cardinals? Not at all. Um, not at all. Uh, it's, it's a weird deal. Uh, Arizona has always been weird. Um, you paid the GM, the head coach and the quarterback, and it, it's like oil and water. One of those guys is going to have to go. And I would bet it's probably going to be the head coach yeah. at some point, because look, when you have a guy like Kyler Murray, who's a virtuoso, he's a do it all guy. And it doesn't really matter what you call with his legs. The guy can make something happen or just turn a bad play into a great play. So why do you need a offensive minded head coach with that guy? Uh, so at some point there's going to be a breaking point with them. Um, I would never let go of a talent like Kyler Murray, but I could definitely bring in someone else that could be more of a defensive minded guy that could let Kyler do his thing on offense. And I could lock down everything else, the other two phases, special teams and defense and get the team going in the right direction. But yeah, I, I just don't see that working long-term for the Cardinals. Yeah, I mean, listen, they've made the long-term commitment. They've given him a ton of money. The money has been put on Kyler Murray, not on the head coach. We're talking to DeMarco Farr. He'll be on the sidelines for the 49ers and the Rams game this weekend as part of the Rams radio network. Um, DeMarco, just uh, looking around, though, um, you say you think the Packers and the Buccaneers will still be there come Christmas time. Buccaneers tonight against Baltimore. What do you expect? Man, uh, you know, I always expect Tom Brady to be Tom Brady, and eventually he will be that guy again. I mean, look, there's, there's no one we've talked about or we're going to talk about this year that's played more football than Tom Brady. So eventually he'll get himself right. Lamar Smith and Lamar Jackson, excuse me, Lamar Jackson in, in Baltimore is always hard to figure because he's kind of like Kyler Murray. If he's feeling great that day, there's almost nothing you can do defensively. I mean, really. He's, he's the fastest guy on the field who happens to be the quarterback. So if he doesn't have any bumps and bruises and they don't have any pre-snap penalties or they have a great week of practice, Lamar will run by you. But Tom Brady is the only guy in the league that could cool off just about anyone, really. If you give him a minute to beat you, he will. If you give him 30 seconds to beat you, he will. So it just depends on which Tom Brady you get. But if Baltimore is rolling, I think they get out to a big lead. But let's see if they can hold it against Tampa. 
Hey, DeMarco, a conversation that me, Grande, and Brown Man have here all the time is about Russell Wilson. Which one's Grande? Which one's Brown Man? Well, you want here, put all four of us on the screen and let's see if if uh let's see if if DeMarco can figure out who's Grande and who's Brown Man. It's a good question. When you don't when you're not acquainted with everybody. <laughs> I see a lot of brown. you know both look pretty big so grande could work for either one but i got you go ahead uh so we have this conversation all the time is uh russell wilson corny or cool and i'm putting it to you he's absolutely corny but he's he is cool um when you're winning the stuff about the airplane (laughs) he's on the airplane going to london right it's corny now because he's not playing very well. But imagine if they were undefeated. You would say, wow, I wish my quarterback would do that. So he's corny and he's cool at the same time. How corny think- can you be when you're married to Sierra? Well, listen, that's a different conversation. Stability. <laughs> and, and, and what, that young Stability? Woman, that woman at the time she met him had been through Bow Wow and had been through Future. And then you, you better stop it. They can hear you. I, I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> when she met Russell Wilson, stability was a great word for her. Russell, and my Russell Wilson is a great man as an individual, as a person. He appears to be a very good man. I'm cool with that. The idea of him working while everybody's knocked out, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. There's no need. He's for super that. corny, definitely, but he's definitely cooler than us. I'm starting. I'm starting to. I really am starting to think that 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 Russell Wilson is a little bit of a liar too, because if you got to tell me how if you got to tell me how hard you're working every single time you talk, I don't think you're working that hard. It's not at least it's not translating on the field. If you're this. working that hard and you're still that bad, a lot of guys who have played with him and coached him, the guy is truthful. He works hard. He works. He works at it more than most. He's the first well, then, guy and last guy to leave every single day. So well, it's almost annoyingly so. Like, dude, just go home. But I think he needs to take a page a from Aaron Rodgers then and, and pull back. You know, you know, <laughs> you like just so? pull back. Yeah. He, like you're too <laughs> invested. You're 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 that thinking I about agree it. With. You're thinking about it too much. You're doing that too I agree much. with. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. But I don't know, man. Did you uh did you I need on an airplane, about- dog? Get get out of here with that. <laughs> I'm trying to sleep, dude. I would absolutely kill him. Yeah. Are you kidding trying... me? I just yeah. got to sleep. Have you guys seen all the memes? Have you guys seen all the memes like people like superimposing him on an airplane and he's just yeah. down the aisle going, Broncos country. Let's yeah. ride. Right. Let's ride. Let's ride. Yeah. 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 I know. No doubt. <laughs> and and DeMarco, did you see that uh that Subway decided to like take down the danger witch sandwich? Did you know that? I didn't see that. That's smart. That's good marketing. I mean, it's it's because, until you start winning that stuff is kind of, like a Baker Mayfield commercial. How silly is that now? Mm-hmm. He, he, he's done. He, he may be a backup. Not even that going forward. But yeah, you, you have to take it down. Smart marketing. Yeah, ain't it funny that, that all those stadiums with Baker were about how Cleveland was his home? That stadium was his home. Like you can't even play the old ones anymore. You can't play old commercials anymore. No. Right. No doubt. <laughs> Need a new rack. Well, I I wonder though. You know. Here's a guy in Matthew Stafford, DeMarco, that you you turn on your TV now. When you're a Super Bowl champion quarterback, you're seeing a lot. Uh, Little Caesars commercials. I want to say like uh, cell phone commercials, maybe even another one. Um, So Matthew Stafford became like a cool commercial pitch guy when you win the Super Bowl, especially when you win it in L.A. for L.A. But the question is, is Matthew Stafford going to have a run of commercials or is is it going to be a one-year deal? You know what? I'm glad he got his due. Uh, I think he's special. And with what has been going on in front of him, offensive line-wise and a lack of a running game, and the fact that you can't find Allen Robinson for the most part, uh, that he's just had to jam it in the Cooper Cup, you know, um, to move the football, I think he's been spectacular. Without a, a guy like him, I think you might be winless this year, really. I mean, he's really had to pull a rabbit out of his hat more often than not. The Rams have been terrible on first and second down, but have been miracle makers on third down. That's all your quarterback. So I keep telling Rams fans that keep harping on me about his pick sixes and his interceptions and his turnovers. That's great. The guy's elite. You are so lucky to have him. You really are. I mean, if he was any less of a quarterback, like I said, you'd be winless right now. He's that good. 
Can I ask you uh, one? This nobody cares about anybody else's fantasy football team, but you brought up Allen Robinson. And I by can't the way, believe just I real saw. Real quick, Alex, got yeah. one minute yeah. to go. Go for I it. I can't believe I saw this. Somebody dropped him in my league. Is he that bad that he should be a free agent on in fantasy, or can I pick him up? Is he going to get the ball again? Hard to figure, man. I mean, look, I, I think versus Carolina, you saw the best of him when he's playing above the rim. I think he's spectacular, but when his feet are on the ground, Matthew Stafford, Sean McVay, Allen Robinson just have not been on the same page yet. Hopefully that's coming. DeMarco Farr giving us a ample amount of time to have a full blown discussion around the NFL. DeMarco have a great broadcast this weekend. We'll all be listening and uh, it is great to be with you always. Thanks for making time for us today. My man cap. Thanks Brown and Grande. Talk to you guys soon. Yes, all sir. right, man. There you go. There's DeMarco Farr, Super Bowl champion, defensive lineman with the Rams, national champion with the Washington Huskies, and uh, all around great guy. I'll tell you that right now. You guys like DeMarco? Yeah, man. Big time. He yeah, said there's cool, a lot man. of brown on that screen. I know. He did say that. And I, I by the way, was flattered time. by that. Well, I don't think he was doing? looking at the top row. Oh, you don't think so? No, yeah. not even close. Mm. I love how he says, who's, who's Grande, who's brown, man? They both, one guy looks big, one guy looks brown. They both look brown. They both look big. I don't know. I don't know the difference. I think that's pretty funny. All right. Um, stick around, everybody, because we've got one segment left to go today, and that will include the highlight of the day, man. Plus, we never really heard the Aaron Rodgers thing where apparently he rips his team. We'll get to it. Stick around. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew. Many are adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to their homes. Our experience, plus our strong relationship with the city, makes adding on easier for our homeowners. We listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com for your consultation. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Locally owned and operated, not some bland, uninspired, corporate, cookie cutter radio station, crap. We simply say to those stations, F you. The mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. Drivers are getting in accidents at a rate we've never seen before, jumping 18% since 2020. There are higher incidents of speeding and more aggressive driving since the pandemic began. Please slow down and drive safely. It can save a life. Murray Lampert's design process is very collaborative. We love the process and what's best about the process is the way that it can flex as needed. So if there's a new piece of technology that's available that's really going to help us out make a more accurate model, we're going to utilize that. We'll send the measure off team to the house and they will end up scanning the house using drones, LIDAR scanning, lasers and tape measures to measure every square inch of the home. Then they'll take that information back to the office and build a 3D model of the home. We'll be upfront and honest if they're asking for things that may be out of their budget, we're gonna let them know upfront. We're always motivated to strive for excellence. There's kind of not another way to be. We do the best work we can and ultimately make the homeowners happy. Uh, what makes me proud is when we present that 3D model to the homeowners and we wow them. Sometimes we even bring tears to their eyes because they love the design so much. That brings me a lot of joy. From fitness to medical technology, explore how people are leading healthier lives on your health. Join Erica Cardenas as she introduces you to health experts and discover how our daily choices affect our well-being. Plus, learn simple tips for a healthier living. Your health, Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on Your View and yourview.com. Your health is brought to you by Clever Care Health Plan, your partners for comprehensive care. I feel like I have the fun part of the job where I get to help out and make my clients' houses look beautiful. We start with looking at the floor plan, space planning, and then we look at countertops, tile, uh, backsplashes, flooring, cabinets, everything like that. We have a lot of client meetings start in our conference room. Sometimes we have some clients that have already selected certain items that they want to incorporate into their project. We want to make sure they're happy with it because they're going to be living with it for a very long time. Sometimes we'll do something that you know goes totally with the style and then we'll have a total outlier option for the client and a lot of the times they end up going with that because they want to see something totally different. We want to make sure that we're focusing in on our clients. 
I really want to make sure at the end of the day that clients are happy, that I'm keeping up with my communication with them, and that we know that at the end of the day as well, and moving through the process of construction and everything, that we're going to have a successful project. At the Barnes Firm, we're seeing more pedestrian and bicycle accidents. Drivers are rolling through red lights and distracted driving makes every intersection a danger zone for pedestrians. Look both ways when crossing, even if you have the right of way. Listen to the Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier1090.com. Hola, I'm J.R. Cardenas. And I'm Vanessa Ramirez. We're the hosts for Subida, where we showcase California restaurants, music, art, culture, and so much more. We would love to talk to you about featuring your business on our show. Yes, and as an added bonus, you get to keep the professional video segment to repurpose and use on your website or social media channels. Please click on the link below to get more information about how to put your business on Subida. Mm-hmm. We hope to hear from you soon. Great things can be achieved when a community comes together. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Watch Doing More Sunday night at 6 on Your View or stream it online at yourview.com. Brought to you by Procopio, San Diego's largest law firm, committed to community, representing San Diegans for more than 75 years. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio and Your View, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Many are adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to their homes. Our experience, plus our strong relationship with the city, makes adding on easier for our homeowners. We listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com for your consultation. Absolutely, the best part of the day is working with the team and working directly with customers. Just because it's fun and I enjoy collaborating, I enjoy watching the customers' reactions when the designers come up with their spaces, and we, we really take pride in the team effort and what we accomplish in the end. I can tell that uh, the team we have, uh, accountability is very important. They feel like the work that we do is, is not just a reflection of themselves, but a reflection of us. We've always been a design build company, but now we've taken design, not only our architectural, but interior design to a completely different level. The philosophy of integrity here at Murray Lampert is always doing the right thing, even when someone isn't looking. In turn, the homeowners get a really great product. We're truly a team at Murray Lampert Design Build Remodel, and we don't take that lightly. Murray Lampert's design process is very collaborative. We love the process, and what's best about the process is the way that it can flex as needed. So if there's a new piece of technology that's available that's really going to help us out make a more accurate model, we're going to utilize that. We'll send the measure off team to the house and they will end up scanning the house using drones, LIDAR scanning, lasers and tape measures to measure every square inch of the home. Then they'll take that information back to the office and build a 3D model of the home. We'll be upfront and honest if they're asking for things that may be out of their budget, we're going to let them know up front. We're always motivated to strive for excellence, there's kind of not another way to be we do the best work we can and ultimately make the homeowners happy. Uh, what makes me proud is when we present that 3D model to the homeowners and we wow them. Sometimes we even bring tears to their eyes because they love the design so much. That brings me a lot of joy. I feel like I have the fun part of the job where I get to help out and make my clients' houses look beautiful. We start with looking at the floor plan, space planning, and then we look at countertops, tile, uh, backsplashes, flooring, cabinets, everything like that. We have a lot of client meetings start in our conference room. Sometimes we have some clients that have already selected certain items that they want to incorporate into their project. We want to make sure they're happy with it because they're going to be living with it for a very long time. Sometimes we'll do something that you know goes totally with the style and then we'll have a total outlier option for the client and a lot of the times they end up going with that because they want to see something totally different. 
We want to make sure that we're focusing in on our clients. I really want to make sure at the end of the day that clients are happy, that I'm keeping up with my communication with them, and that we know that at the end of the day as well, and moving through the process of construction and everything, that we're going to have a successful project. Joining me now is Paco Franco, Medicare Benefits Consultant with Clever Care. Thank you so much for joining us, Paco. Thank you so much, Erica. I really, really appreciate it. First off, we hear that Clever Care is a health plan customized for growing diverse populations. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. One of the most distinct differences uh, of Clever Care is that we combine the, the principles of Eastern and Western medicine to our, our approach of healthcare. You know, we believe in the complete well being of our members and believe that wellness should be affordable. Anybody who's eligible for Medicare can join Clever Care Medicare Advantage HMO plan. We also have another enrollment period coming up called the annual enrollment period. This is the most popular one, which takes place from October 15th to December 7th. And during this time, you can sign up for a new plan, you can switch plans, you can leave a plan, or simply just return to your original Medicare. Surf Soccer has been around for over 30 years. We're based here in San Diego, but we are the premier national youth sports brand in soccer. Our mission is to create experiences and opportunities for kids, and we do that here mostly in San Diego with our 1,000 kids, but we also do it through our events where we really help kids chase their dreams. PNC Bank sponsorship helps the kids here. One, it is to continue to help fund facilities like this where the kids can come play soccer. Two, it is really through our scholarship program. There are a lot of kids in San Diego that have incredible levels of talent, but they can't afford to play on a team like surf. And so a lot of our sponsorship dollars go back into scholarships to give an opportunity for kids who are low to moderate income to play on one of the elite teams in the U.S. Having a partner like PNC who is community oriented and cares about the development of youth in the community is amazing because our missions are completely aligned and we're both driven by helping develop kids and in this case through sport in San Diego. If you're going to count yourself as a fan of this radio station, you will need to continuously ask yourself one basic question. Am I listening? Enough. Pro tip, wives are not a good source for input on this. This is the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. Many are adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to their homes. Our experience, plus our strong relationship with the city, makes adding on easier for our homeowners. We listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com for your consultation. Congratulations to the 2022-23 San Diego County Teachers of the Year, Jacqueline Ma, Stephanie Cluxton, Amy McCoy, Juanita Nunez, and Melissa Raines. Congratulations to all the Teachers of the Year. We salute you and everything you do for your students. Change the way you look and feel with San Diego's most comprehensive varicose and spider vein treatment facility. San Diego Varicose Vein Treatment Center offers minimally invasive, pain-free procedures performed by board-certified cardiologist Dr. Tahizade. With over 17 years of experience, we specialize in the diagnosis of varicose veins, spider veins on the face, hands, and legs, ankle discoloration, leg swelling, and more. Improve your vein health today. Visit consultation.sdveintreatment.com or call 619-582-2404. From fitness to medical technology, explore how people are leading healthier lives on your health. 
Join Erica Cardenas as she introduces you to health experts and discover how our daily choices affect our well-being. Plus, learn simple tips for a healthier living. Your Health, Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on Your View and yourview.com. Your Health is brought to you by Clever Care Health Plan, your partners for comprehensive care. joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal sports talk.